Okay, so you are tackling some hard questions. Uh, it could be at any level, really. Um, GCSE, maths, 13 plus, and you are just frozen. It's not going anywhere, and you're getting frustrated. You're doing the same thing again and again. Here's a few simple tips on how to get you unfrozen and going again. Number one, if you're doing any past papers, when the first time you're doing past papers, I wouldn't put any time limit in them. As soon as you put time limits on past papers, your mind is working in very limited capacity. It just doesn't have that kind of free thinking that it should in order to solve problems. So by all means, when you've done quite a few past papers, you can introduce the time constraint. But before that, just do them without any time limits. Next point is I love the use of color in maths. I um, use a four color pen a lot in maths and I recommend you buy it. And it just brings geometry especially to life. Um, here's an example, uh, I've got a few lines. Different colors just livens them up. Uh, so the next point comes to any rough working out. So when I was first learning maths, my dad told me and I still remember it, just put a little rough column on the right hand side. So let's say I was working 23 times 7. Uh, instead of kind of thinking about it, I just put it on the rough hand. I kind of scribble it there and then I say, oh, I know what this is. And then on the left hand side where I'm doing most of the working out, I uh, use the result. So that frees up your mind a little bit more from over clutter. Yeah? You don't want to think of these little sub calculations in your head all the time. Just commit it out to paper. So the next point is the use of white space. Uh, white space in the world of design is, um, it's actually I am right on a white space. Well, on paper, it's the amount of writing versus white space. This is actually, I'm using, uh, this is a, quite cluttered actually. So um, this is an example of where um, there's not enough white space. So what you could do is just expand everything out. The more white space, the better. Uh, conversely, when we start cluttering our writing into a corner, uh, it kind of clutters our mind as well. And uh, if you are doing that, just make sure you use lots and lots of paper, expand everything every way, and it'll yeah, it'll actually just expand. Um, yeah, it'll ease up your thinking as well. Actually, believe it or not. So the next point is um, using physical objects. Uh, for students of dyscalculia or even primary school students. I love hands-on maths. I use coloured rods called Cuisinaire rods and um, I use penny coins or IP coins with children. Let's say we've got 12 coins, we want to split them into two teams. So I get my students to physically move them around or three teams and I, you, know, you physically move them around. That act of physically moving things is very, very important in learning and you know, I can't underestimate how important that is actually the more hands-on the better this then brings us to another point uh, say it out loud so believe it or not uh, saying out things as you're writing them really really helps you process things faster uh, it might seem crazy talking to yourself when you're writing it you know you can whisper or if there's no one else you can just talk it out um, actually I use this method when I'm teaching online because I ask my students to say out what they are uh, they're writing which is very very useful for them and um, you know if things are not working out you can always just just leave the problem and go for a cup of tea sleep over it what you'll find is your subconscious mind is really really powerful it's going to be working on the problem even while you're having that cup of tea believe it or not and often you'll find just coming back uh, after a few minutes uh, or, a, or a day you say oh I just I just work this out because you're not locked into that constrained way of thinking. So lastly, if nothing else helps, um, then you know what? There's no shame in just saying, I don't know how to do this. Can you help me, please? You can ask your maths teacher. You can ask your friends. You can ask any extra class. Sometimes you'll find that even asking your friend will help you because you'll phrase the question in such a way, you'll present it to your friend in such a way that you'll actually think of it differently and just by thinking of it differently you'll often find oh actually I don't need to ask that at all how many times has that happened to you uh, or me it's you know it's one of those one of those things uh, so those are my tips for getting your mind unfrozen and uh, yeah I hope you all the best for your studies